jump here. Why would I do that? Because I watched 30 movies from the Dollar Tree in the past month? I enjoyed myself, I like it. In case you're new to the channel, Dollar Tree, they sell DVDs and Blu-rays. And you can actually find some that are pretty darn good. I'm gonna go ahead and rank these in order from the ones I enjoyed the least to the ones I enjoyed the most. So the worst one out of the bunch and the only one I didn't finish is Nature Calls. Throw here. I would, but that would be littering. This is just a total waste of the cast. It has a good cast. Uh, Patton Oswalt, uh, Johnny Knoxville, Rob Riggle, Patrice O'Neill. Nothing about this movie is funny and this is the only movie that I'm going to be reviewing that I didn't finish. I only watched the first 20 minutes of. I didn't laugh a single time. I even then watched the trailer to see if anything funny was in there. There wasn't, so I just gave up. I do not recommend this movie, Nature Calls. So next up we got Trek. I did not enjoy my time with this one. I got bored really quickly. It's just not made for me. It's about Mormon teenagers who go on a trek to recreate one from the 1800s or whatever. And at first I thought it was gonna be like a movie I wasn't expecting like Orgasmo, which makes fun of Mormons, but maybe along the lines of like Kingpin, which kind of pokes at the Amish. It's not like that at all. It practices Mormon values and family values. Something I'm not looking for when I buy a movie at the Dollar Tree. Wouldn't recommend this one unless you're into family movies or you're a Mormon or something. Next up on the list, some of you might be surprised this is so low. You might be the killer. Which is like a deconstruction of slasher movies. The problem is there's already dozens of movies that already do that better. Like what Scream, 26 years old by this point. And then you have like, uh, you know, Behind the Mask and Hatchet also kind of does that also. And... Uh, yeah, it thought it was too clever for its own good, in my opinion, and I just wasn't into it. And it's like a comedy, and I didn't find it very funny. Uh, it is like artistically somewhat well done. I just didn't like it. Like there was kill counts on the screen, and the and the movie also didn't take place in order, so it would be like kill count eight, and then it would flash back to kill count five, and like, I, just be a slasher movie. And uh, I feel that a lot of these horror comedies only exist as comedies because the filmmaker can't make an actual scary movie, so they have to resort to the comedy. This girl in here, Allison Hannigan, American Pie Lady, she's only in like scenes that take place in a record store and she's on f the phone uh, with the main character the whole time. Uh, I guess that's for budgetary reasons. Uh, yeah, you might like it. I wasn't that into You Might Be the Killer. Kingsglaive, Final Fantasy 15. I wasn't into this movie very much. I didn't really understand what was going on in the plot. Uh, it had like good looking CGI. I just didn't care. Uh, it does have some good names on there. You got Aaron Paul, Sean Bean. Uh, just not really my thing. If you like Final Fantasy 15, you might like this. I like the old Final Fantasy games. I even saw the old Final Fantasy movie in the theater. Uh, and I liked it at the time. Just didn't care for this too much. Next up, we have a Wesley Snipe double feature here. Nine Lives. That was a generic cop type movie. He was a CIA agent. And uh, it's fine, it's just not great or anything. And then uh, the recall, which involves like aliens and stuff. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's good like in a cheesy way. Uh, so if you like that type of thing, you might get a kick out of it, but not great by any means. I'm disappointed to say I wasn't that into this one, the Redwood Massacre. This is by Uncorked. And I feel that Uncorked is very good at dressing up movies to make them look better than what they are. 
you have the quotes there by Ain't It Cool News, Hara Society. You got the little leafy things there. If a movie has leafy things, it must be good. Uh, gore hounds will love it. There was a lot of gore. But the problem with this movie is all the kills were like the same thing. Movie magic, you have to do many steps to believe like what's going on screen. But this movie would just be like a close-up of a person's stomach. Like a fake stomach. And then the knife go in. And then the actor's face going, Aah! And then the fake stomach again with the knife going in. And then cut to the face. Aah! Repeated. Like every kill. You need a fake knife. You need that like goes into the belly and you see the whole actor. And you need multiple things to make kills look real in horror movies. This just didn't really even try to do that. Uh, and did have a lot of fake blood. So if you're into that, uh, you might think this is uh, pretty good. Gotta outrun these bugs here. What's funny about this movie is it takes place in Scotland, I'm assuming. Although they never say, but all the actors have Scottish accents. But they act American. One guy wears a Yankees baseball hat. Like, do uh, Scottish people care about American baseball? And also, they drink Budweiser. I'm sure they have better beer than Budweiser in Scotland. Uh, just thought that was kind of interesting. The killer in the movie was actually pretty cool. Uh, so I'm not totally dismissing this movie. Next on the list, Kukui the Boogeyman. I enjoyed this one a little bit more. This is also by Uncorked Entertainment. And once again, it does a good job of dressing it up like it's going to be really good, intense, fast-paced, and very well done. The Horror Report. Sorry, Horror Report. You probably got paid money to say that. It's... It's okay. Like, it's fine. The monster looks pretty cool. The plot is basically this girl gets uh, home confinement because she beats up a bully. Then she witnesses something going on through a telescope, so it's basically like the plot of Rear Window. And the Kukui is uh, like kidnapping kids. It's based on a Spanish uh, fairy tale. The book The Outsider by Stephen King, I actually just read that a few months back, that features the Kukui. And when I first picked this up, I didn't put the two together like I had forgotten. Uh, so this was all right. You could do a lot worse, but it's not great. So the movies are getting better and better, but I still wasn't totally impressed with The Perfect Host, which is upsetting. You got David Hyde Pierce, who's usually good. You got four stars by Spin Magazine. Uh, Looks like it would be good. I just didn't find it funny at all. The plot was, uh, I mean, it's obvious by the cover. Uh, the perfect host. Guess what? Spoiler alert, he's not a perfect host. He's a cuckoo crazy man. And this, the movie starts off and like, I thought like the wrong movie was on the disc. Cause it's this guy like, uh, he's like robbing a grocery store and then he needs a place to like, lay low so he's going from door to door trying to get someone to take him in until he comes to david hyde pierce and uh then uh things happen and the the party weird things are going on there's a plot twist that's really dumb in my opinion i'm not going to give that away uh so overall i just wasn't that into this movie so yes, I didn't like the David Hyde Pierce movie that much. I did prefer Nazi Overlord, starring Tom Sizemore, in quotes, starring. He's on screen, as typical, for four minutes, and it's only like two scenes. They knocked him out in half a day, I'm sure. This is basically, I guess it's a ripoff of the movie Overlord. They just add Nazi on there to confuse people. I like exploitation movies, and that's what this is exactly. The first half is just a standard World War II movie, but then halfway through the plot changes and it becomes very sci-fi heavy, and it's actually pretty entertaining. Like, it's not trying to be art or anything. It's part of the reason why I like it. Like, it's not pretentious at all. <laughs> Next on the list, Kill Me Three Times. When Simon Pegg is on screen, this is a very good movie, but he's just a supporting character, basically. So he's not on screen at all times. When he's not on screen, it can get a little boring. 
it's almost like a soap opera at times. It's told uh, from three different perspectives of someone uh, getting killed. Uh, and it's pretty good. Check it out if you can find it for a buck. Why the heck not? Short Term 12, which is a very heavy drama movie. You got Brie Larson. She's in Captain Marvel. She's in a bunch of other movies. She's pretty good. She plays a counselor at a home for troubled teenagers who are, I think, mostly suicidal, maybe other problems as well. Uh, so it's very heavy. It's well done, though. I did think I was going to like it more than I actually did. The first 20 minutes, uh, it, it was really good, but then it got uh, just a little boring. Uh, but still definitely worth checking out if you think you'd like that type of movie. It has that kid from Black Klansman and uh, the movie Sorry to Bother You in a very early role, which is interesting. Uh, I actually don't like the movie Sorry to Bother You. Uh, it's just too bat poop crazy, in my opinion. Next up is Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell. It actually looks like we could film a Tremors sequel here. I enjoyed my time with Tremors. It was pretty good. Jamie Kennedy has never been better. Not that he's great or anything in this, but he, he does his job. It's entertaining. If you can find Tremors for a buck, definitely, definitely grab it. You would have anyways without me telling you that. VHS. Very good score for Dollar Tree. I don't think many people found this at Dollar Tree. I only found it one time. I only found Tremors at Dollar Tree one time also. Uh, so some of these are going to be hard to find, but definitely recommend obviously grabbing if you see them. VHS is good. It's all shot on handheld uh, camera, like it's uh, found VHS footage. Although, wouldn't it be like on digital video from... Not that anyone cares, but like when this movie came out, no one was using VHS. It would have been digital video. But anyways, the movie's great at points, and then other times a little boring. Uh, the shakiness of the handheld cameras isn't too bad. It's not as bad as Cloverfield, which I think has the shakiest of all the handheld movies. Uh, but yeah, some of these segments are awesome. It could have been a little bit shorter. It's two hours. It probably should have only been an hour and 40 minutes or so. But I still enjoyed it. I almost feel guilty having this so high on the list, the awkward comedy show because it's not even a movie, it's just uh, stand-up performances labeled as a movie, sold at the Dollar Tree. So it's about awkward black comics. And obviously, like, you know, someone just get, grabs a bunch of comics who are black and says, hey, do a show, and they film it and release the DVD. So it's not, like, much of a movie, but I still thought it was funny. Uh, Hannibal Burris being the funniest one by far. Eric Andre, uh, he's very funny in movies and on his TV show, but his stand-up is just uh, okay. And the other people are, are just all right comics. They're not as good. Uh, but I did enjoy myself watching this. Very easy movie to watch. Uh, and yeah, so if you find this, check it out. Next up, and I hate saying this, it's Ernest. His movies are much better than this uh, kid's TV show. Uh, this is fine, but you know, it's like over three hours and I had to sit there and watch the whole thing. And uh, I just wasn't that entertained. I love Ernest Goes to Camp. I love all those earlier Ernest movies, uh, but this is just passable. And I'm also not nostalgic for it. Like I did watch the movies as a kid, but I never had seen this. Uh, it, so if you like Ernest and can put up with Ernest with just using household props to make you laugh, then you'll have a fun time with It's Ernest. You might be interested in checking out Dead Shack. I did, and I enjoyed myself. 
this is how you do horror comedy in the correct way. It's not perfect by any means, but the characters were at least likable in this movie and they were funny. So this movie is about so this movie is about a lady who keeps her zombified family members alive and brings people in uh, to feed to them. And these kids on a camping trip uh, uh, discover this and they have to get away. And it's pretty good. So it does suffer from this problem, which a lot of movies suffer from. And I realize like, well, it's entertainment, but the characters are like way more clever than they should be. Like they're in some situation where they're gonna die and then they just say something like witty and funny. Like that would never happen. But I did enjoy Dead Shack. So I like exploitation movies and you can't get any more exploitation than this. Death Kiss, which stars a guy that looks like Charles Bronson. And Death w Kiss is a play on Death Wish. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not a perfect movie, obviously. Uh, but it's just a spectacle to watch. The guy looks just like Charles Bronson. It's like dead on. But his voice is dubbed, so I don't think he sounds like him or else they would have used his normal voice. But funny enough, the dubbed voice doesn't sound like Charles Bronson either. It just kind of sounds like a robot. It'll be like, here, I brought you this money. It's very like deadpan and serious. Uh, I can actually do an impression of Charles Bronson. Well, not of Charles Bronson. I do an impression of Hank Azaria doing an impression of Charles Bronson. On The Simpsons, some of the characters are based off of the voice of Charles Bronson. So it, it goes like this, it goes, uh, check this out. Here's your problem. Someone set this thing to evil. Thank you, thank you. That's my Hank Azaria doing Charles Bronson impression. They should have had me do the overdub. So yeah, I would say watch Death Kiss. You even got this guy in there. He's in Three O'Clock High. He's in Kindergarten Cop as the bad guy. Uh, always good seeing him in a film. He doesn't do much movies, it seems. Here's another one I feel kind of guilty putting it so high on the list. Films of Fury, the Kung Fu movie movie. Because it takes clips from the greatest Kung Fu movies of all time and puts it in there. So, of course, it's going to be good. Uh, it does overlook a lot of stuff. It's only... How long is it? It's 80 minutes. They don't talk about Sonny Chiba. They don't talk about like uh, Quentin Tarantino. They skip over that, but they do talk about Kung Fu Panda. This seems strange. Uh, but yeah, I definitely had a fun time watching this. Buy it if you can find it. Next, we got the car. I had a fun time with this one. It's very over the top, silly and violent. What's silly is the plot. It's a guy dies and then comes back as a car. What's funny is I filmed a video a very long time ago, like a mini movie about a kid who dies. His name is, uh, was it uh, Billy Mitchell Xenon? BMX initials. Uh, he gets uh, struck by lightning while riding a bicycle and he dies and he becomes infused with the bike and he kills people. Go ahead, give the car a shot. Yeah. He's a cool motorcycle man. Yeah, heck yeah. They're kicking butt over there. Sushi Girl is a movie that I bought. Didn't open it, found it on 2B, so I watched it there instead, yeah. I like Sushi Girl, it was a fun time. The plot is a little silly. You like don't know what's really gonna be going on. But, uh, so these guys, they, uh, they rob a diamond jewelry store and uh, one guy goes to jail and they think he stashed the diamonds. So they're trying to like interrogate him to find out where they are once that guy gets out of jail. The Sushi Girl, really doesn't have much to do with the plot. Uh, but it's a fun time. Mark Hamill was really good in it. 
definitely recommend checking this one out. In order of disappearance, you might be familiar with the Liam Neeson movie Cold Pursuit. Well, this is the original Norwegian version. It's by the same director. It's basically the same exact movie. Uh, it's good. I liked it. I saw Cold Pursuit in the theater. I can't really say which one I enjoyed more. I, I would have to watch them both back to back to say for sure. I'm not gonna be doing that. But uh, you should check this out in order of disappearance if you find it. I watched it with subtitles, but I did switch back and forth between the English dubbed version, and you're probably just better off with uh, the subtitles. Next on the list, another one I was shocked that they would carry at the Dollar Tree, The Secret of Nim. Now, of all the movies that I bought at Dollar Tree in this review, this one is probably the one that took the most talent to make. It wasn't my absolute favorite to watch, uh, but I did enjoy myself. Excellent, excellent animation. What's kind of interesting is the guy who made this, Don Bluth, used to work for Disney, but he became jaded because the animation quality in the 70s and early 80s really went downhill, so he wanted to make like the old school, really uh, quality animated movies, so that's why he started making uh, these movies. Oh, also what's interesting is, the movie doesn't really touch upon this too much, but the name, The Secret of N Nim, NIM stands for National Institute of Mental Health, which they do mention, but the connection is the National Institute of Mental Health used to do these crazy experiments where they would take um, mice and rats and put them in like uh, little areas where they gave them as much food and water as they needed, but they didn't give them enough space and they wanted to see how crazy they would become and they did become crazy. The the mice would like eat each other and like do all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, very dark subject matter for the to be the title of an animated kids movie. Next on the list, The Edge of Seventeen. This was a good movie, very funny, very entertaining. It was refreshing to see a teen high school movie that was rated R. That's not like trying to be a sex comedy. It takes itself pretty seriously, uh, but it is still a comedy. Woody Harrelson is hilarious in this movie. Definitely recommend this one. Uh, it's by a producer from The Simpsons. I think his name is Sam Simon. I might be remembering wrong. Uh, the guy who passed away, whatever his name was. Sorry, no disrespect, but I forget what his name was. Uh, but yeah, this uh, was a good time. I liked The Edge of Seventeen. But I did like this one even more. Bring me the head of the machine gun woman. This is a crazy movie. Uh, I just had fun watching it. Uh, what's interesting is it's like a video game. Like he goes on missions like in Grand Theft Auto. Uh, the guy will get missions. Like, oh, you know, go rescue the girl before she's killed. Uh, and it'll follow behind him, like, in the car, like, the same camera angle they use in the Grand Theft Auto games. And it'll also say, like, uh, you know, mission passed, uh, mission fail. But it's all in Spanish, which is also kind of interesting. This movie's dubbed, but, like, they don't redub the the text on screen. Uh, but it's fine. It doesn't hinder anything. Uh, and they actually do a pretty good job with the dubbing. Like, they don't take it too seriously. Like, they try to make the dubbing fun. It's almost like uh, that television show, The Most Extreme Elimination Challenge, or whatever it was called, where the dubbing is silly. Uh, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed this movie. Seems like a harder one to find at Dollar Tree, but definitely pick it up. So as you can see, I watch all types of movies. Another family one, Monster Trucks. And I enjoyed this a lot. Definitely would recommend it. Uh, had a fun time with it. Whoa, trip there, almost broke my ankle. Uh, it was somewhat similar to Bumblebee. Not like the plot, but just kind of in uh, the tone of it. Like a family movie that everyone can enjoy. I don't think this got the greatest of reviews, uh, 
but it's definitely good. I had a fun time. Now this was a used one, so it's gonna be hard to find at your Dollar Tree, but Dollar Tree does occasionally have used DVDs. You got Tom Lennon, you got Rob Lowe. They did a good job. So I have a couple of boxes filled with Dollar Tree movies that I haven't gotten to yet. I kind of just grab whatever one that interests me at that moment and we'll throw it on. Uh, so a lot of these are ones that like I thought would be pretty good. I was uh, right a lot of the time. Sometimes uh, I was disappointed. This next one, again, I kind of feel bad about it being on the list, being compared to a movie that only has a fraction of its budget. But the next one, and we're in the top five now, guys. So this is uh, my fifth favorite one from recent Dollar Tree pickups that I haven't reviewed yet. And that is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So like, is it fair to compare this movie to Dead Shack? Not really, but it's a list. You gotta put it somewhere. Number five, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, I was always a little bit disappointed that the original series, they messed up the third one. They could have had Venom be some big character that could have been a whole movie by itself. Uh, they didn't do a very good job like that. And then they just ended it and then they rebooted it with the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, which was pretty good, but not as good as the Sam Raimi ones and somewhat pointless. So I never actually saw this one. But I will review this one because I haven't seen it and I enjoyed myself, but it's one of the weakest Spider-Man movies. It might be better than Spider-Man 3, like I guess technically, but Spider-Man 3 to me is more fun to watch. Uh, but that by no means uh, makes this bad. Jamie Foxx as uh, Electro was just kind of weird. Like I'm not too familiar with Electro, but it seems like they totally changed his character. Like he's like this nerdy guy in this. I don't know if that's true with the comics or not, uh, but I enjoyed myself. This was a fun watch. If you can find it, grab Amazing Spider-Man 2. So even more than Amazing Spider-Man 2, I enjoyed this one. They call me Jeeg at number four. Another superhero movie. I wasn't even gonna pick this up at first because it just looked like something that wouldn't interest me, but it was really, really good. It's an Italian movie, so it has subtitles. Uh, it's R-rated but it's not R-rated in a Deadpool way where they, you know, say a lot of swears just to get the R rating. Like it's mature themes and stuff. And it's not really meant for kids, uh, which is why I liked it. Good flick, recommend this one. I gave Uncorked Entertainment a hard time. This one's Uncorked and it's actually good. Not that the others are horrible, but uh, like I said, the packaging sometimes make it, makes it look better than what it really is. Uh, so they do have some good movies there on Uncorked. Uh, Uncorked doesn't actually make the movies, they just release them, so. Number three. My third favorite movie from recent Dollar Tree pickups is Roman J. Israel Esquire, starring Denzel Washington. Denzel was amazing in this. It's a really, really good movie. He plays a lawyer who his partner dies and now he, uh, Denzel just basically worked like behind the scenes as a lawyer. He didn't present the cases in the courtroom. And then when his partner dies, he has to do it. And he's a very abrasive guy. So like he gets in trouble doing that. Uh, they never really say in the movie, but like he's kind of like an oddball. He might be on the spectrum or something. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Definitely entertaining. So unfortunately I don't have enough for everyone, but the first person who wants it can grab the digital code right there and check it out. I hope that still is valid. Let me know in the comments if that worked for you. My second favorite movie from recent Dollar Tree pickups, The Anchorman Collection. Kind of not fair that there's three movies in there, but that actually lowers it so that it's not number one, only because I don't like Anchorman 2 that much. I've seen the original Anchorman a million times. I rewatched it 
and uh, I still had some laughs not as fresh as it as it was when it first came out but the reason it is number two is because I was so impressed with Anchorman wake up Ron Burgundy that's it uh, it's a movie just made of bonus footage from the first movie so you think oh that would be horrible it's just leftover scraps from the first one but no there's still really good scenes and I laughed really hard at some parts uh, it's got a good cast too Amy Poehler's in there uh, Maya Rudolph you have the guy who played Goon from Buffalo 66 that's one of my favorite movies Buffalo 66 so when the actor is in other movies I'm always excited I don't think many people are gonna find this at their Dollar Tree so I did get lucky on that one but oh so awesome definitely recommend that one and time for number one my favorite recent Dollar Tree pickup was Dead Ant this movie was hilarious it's the best that Tom Arnold has ever been obviously it's cheesy it's supposed to be but it handles it very well you got Sean Astin in there Jake Busey it was a really good time the CGI is corny, but in a movie like this, uh, it's what to expect. I definitely recommend watching this one, Dead Ant. And I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for more content. You know the deal. I'm always putting out Dollar Tree stuff, other DVD collecting stuff. I do theme park stuff. I do movie reviews. We have fun here subscribe it helps me out i know it's a it seems like it doesn't matter for a small channel like this it actually does matter a lot and uh sorry uh i'm gonna stop groveling now okay see you later bye as i was walking i saw a deer but i didn't tell anyone about it until right now